try my best to hide my overhead light that is completely glaring down on my forehead. It's not even five fingers, y'all. Just like, oh my fucking God. Hi everybody, welcome back. And if you're new here, my name is Sydney. I am a software engineer as well as a content creator that focuses a lot on finding ways to help you live a more mindful and productive life. This is my last video of 2020 and I wanted to share with you guys really quickly a requested video that I got on Twitter. Recently, I have been studying for a couple of exams and a couple of projects that are gonna be coming up in the next year. So I just wanted to kind of sit down and tell you guys how that's going and specifically how I have been studying so far. I have been studying for the Scaled Agile Framework Scrum Master Certification. And for some of you, this is going to sound a little bit funny. You're not really sure what this is or what exactly the concept of SAFE, that's the abbreviation for it, is for, and that's okay. I will have a bunch of links as well as resources in the description box below for you guys. I am so happy to get on and talk with you about this for a couple of minutes. And I really hope that this helps you gain a little bit of experience and more of an edge, especially for those of you who are trying to get into tech that are trying to get that transition and want a little bit more experience on what else you should be learning outside of coding because this is super important when it comes to the productivity and the building of a project, especially in a professional setting. I also wanna lay out a really huge disclaimer so I'm just kind of like making a mental note to remind myself later. As I have become a post-college graduate as well as a person that doesn't necessarily have to study any thing that she doesn't want to anymore. I consider myself, even though I'm a perfectionist, incredibly lazy. And having to spend the time to take timed tests that are like an hour, an hour and a half, two hours or whatever, it, it always gives me anxiety, point blank, period. There is no kind of like getting over that hump. I've never been able to get over that hump before. Sometimes I freeze, sometimes I just get very nervous. I've definitely hyperventilated a couple of times during exams because I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. I am a big proponent of making sure that I spend money wherever I need to for the help that I need and dedicating a lot of time for myself as well as whatever goal that I want want to achieve to get done. And before I tell you guys how I work, how my processes are when it comes to my notes, when it comes to conversations, when it comes to understanding concepts, these practices have worked for me for the longest time to help me pass exams, to help me understand concepts, and they might not necessarily work for you. And so there are plenty of resources out there to help you figure out what exactly is your learning preference, how you like to learn, what you like to learn. And I hope that, again, this is just a stepping stone to help you get to where you want to go. Okay, now that that's done, moving on. The Skilled Agile Framework is a set of organizational workflow patterns to help promote collaboration and continuous delivery of a product at a large scale. And so this means that there is a lot going on with how you organize yourself, how you set yourself up for a team to continually deliver just very short incremental pieces of technology to help foster growth for the overall product. And and it's really important that during your safe framework, you get that continuous feedback from whoever you're giving it that specific feature to and help them kind of understand what you need to honestly help them get what product that they want. This framework can be used in a lot of spaces that are outside of tech. And me personally, I've never experienced anything like a scaled agile framework outside of technology, outside of my job as a software engineer, but I know that there are plenty of products and spaces that use this framework to help them just get a bit more organized and help them get that continuous feedback loop for what they need for their specific products. Now, specifically, a scrum master is a person who is a servant leader that coaches the teams to foster improvement and trust and ensures that proper agile processes are implemented into these teams to make sure that they excel, to make sure that they are continuously 
continuously delivering the product and continuously getting feedback so they can foster their own growth and their own quality built into whatever products that they're continuously delivering. It's kind of like you have your own type of therapist maybe on the team. I, I can't say that that's maybe the best thing to call them, but you are essentially a person that wants to make sure that you're fostering good relationships with every person on the team. You're wanting to make sure that trust is established in the team. There are different degrees of agile processes that are used across all types of companies. And specifically, I got a question on Twitter as to why I decided to go with the safe method for being certified as a scrum master instead of the just certified scrum master, the CSM uh, certification. And to answer your question, it, there really wasn't too big of a preference. So the biggest factor for me for taking the SAFE exam instead of the CSM exam was actually because I am working currently in a group right now that actually does more in the SAFE Agile process than anything. And so I recognized the concepts already and that kind of helped me figure out what exactly I wanted to kind of foster when it comes to my growth. Now as for why I am taking the exam, um, the biggest answer that I can tell you guys is that like, I don't want to be a software engineer for the rest of my career. <laughs> I know that I have some type of calling that includes a mixture of helping people, making them laugh and helping them to learn something. Being a software engineer doesn't always necessarily foster that need for giving more when it comes to learning as well as like that concept of helping people kind of like grow and make them laugh and not that it doesn't do that completely. Again, this is something that I am still trying to figure out as I go along, but I know that my calling somewhere is with those three concepts and I would like to at least continue in the industry somehow. So once I decide that I don't want to be coding for 12 hours a day anymore, then maybe this is a potential way to kind of foster more of my growth and see what else happens. I was originally introduced to EBK Syndicate on December 1st. This is an organization organization that specifically helps black and brown people get certified in a safe agile process in different degrees that includes with teams as well as scrum masters as well as product owners again more links in the description box for you guys if you are really starting to think about whether or not you want to be in a non-technical non-programming role and you're not really sure where exactly you want to start when it comes to that i would always recommend that you look at certifications that you can get specifically whether or not you want to get something in the scrum setting or the safe agile setting. I just want you guys to know that you don't need to be a programmer to be in the tech industry. This is one way of doing things, but getting your certifications if you do not want to program is super important. So make sure that you do your research. So I registered for their class and I took their next session over the weekend during December 5th over to December 6th. In total, it was about 16 hours long. So that was two eight hour days where we were just going over having discussions of what exactly it means to be a scrum master, what exactly that role plays in a safe, agile procedure perspective and what exactly it means to help foster growth within a team, as well as becoming a servant leader and how exactly that evolves as you start kind of working with teams and working to foster that growth in yourself and other people. For me, when it comes to lecture style activities or classes like this, they can be very long, they can be very arduous sometimes. And I will tell you right now, my attention span can be gone just like that. I've gotten older. I don't know what it is. I might have to get tested for something. I, I, I don't know, guys. It is important to start listening to the conversation of the person who is lecturing, who is telling a story, who is sharing off their experiences on what their subject matter is and how exactly they've gotten from point A to point B, how exactly their experience has led them to teaching at this point. And for me with EBK Syndicate, I was so happy that Ebony and Bowie were very open to foster conversation, to help us kind of figure out what exactly we were wanting to figure out based on their experience. That helped kind of take away from being so focused on the slide decks. 
when it comes to taking notes, that is so important. Listening to what the instructor is saying and then being able to translate that in your mind and then writing down a summary in one or two sentences on what exactly that they're talking about, maybe using a couple of examples after that, based on what they're talking about, not word for word, guys, that's the important thing. You want to make sure that as you are listening and as you are comprehending what they are saying, you put that into your own words because that is helping you lock in whatever they are saying and then communicate it back. After that weekend was when I realized that there were a couple of steps that I would need to take to make sure that I had the correct criteria to start taking the exam. I was also recommended that I take the practice exam as many times as I wanted to, to just make sure that I'm really understanding how the flow of the questions are, what exactly they were looking like, and how exactly I needed to improve on studying certain concepts. If you are going to be taking this exam or any type of exams, if you do have a practice one, make sure that you take the practice exam as many times as you want to. So it'll just help you figure out where exactly you need to continue your learning and what you don't necessarily need to focus on as much anymore because you've gotten it. I normally sit down every weekday for one hour to look over whatever concepts that I want to. In the month of December, I really wanted to focus on getting this Scrum Master exam done on the 30th for the first time. So I decided instead to work on the concepts for this exam. I started reading the concepts that were in the workbook and I would start jotting down with a blue pen anything that I missed or anything that I was told that would be important on the exam that I needed a bit more clarity and understanding on. And I would do this in increments. So you guys are hopefully familiar with the Pomodoro method where for 25 minutes you do some deep focused work. I would go for 25 minutes where I would read the workbook, kind of summarize it in my head, what exactly that I learned. I would give myself the question, what exactly do you understand from reading this section or reading this concept? I would write down if there was something else important that I would need to pay attention to in blue ink in my notes. And then if there was something else that I might need to look at potentially at a later time, I would go and write myself a sticky note Again, in blue ink, I have a system for it. It's not super important to tell you guys about it this time, but in my blue ink, I would just write down any other extra concepts that I might need to understand a little bit later so I can just go back to it and review it the next day potentially. And after my 25 minute timer was up, I could spend five minutes, I would get up and stretch, I would get on social media, I might go get another glass of tea, might go pee, or might just start prepping for getting online for the day. See, for me, it's really important to take frequent breaks because again, short attention span, can't do it anymore. I don't try and force myself to do that anymore. It's just not worth it. I will just have just a smoke blowing out of my ears after a while. So now on the weekends or whenever I decided to carve a little bit more time into my day to study for this exam, what I would do is log on to Quizlet, one of those flashcard websites that are out there to help like college students and adults kind of with their different exams. There are plenty of safe, agile or what is it, scrum, uh, certification <laughs> flashcards that are out there that have awesome questions, awesome answers that will help you kind of figure out, engage what exactly is on the exam. So I'd recommend that you guys do a little Google search and figure out which ones are the best for you. I would read the question out loud for myself. I would also read the answers, like the multiple choice ones that were on the flashcard. I would pick one and then just flip it around. And if I got the question wrong, what I would do is write down the question. I would write down the answer and see if there were any little details that would help me remember that this is the concept that I got wrong and go back to them after I am done with the actual, what is it, quiz or flashcards or whatever. Then after I decided that I was comfortable with like looking over and researching and Googling, I would just go and take the practice exam because that is the most important part is getting comfortable with timing yourself in the exam, making sure that you don't go over the time frame that they are giving you in the practice exam and going from there. I would normally try and complete the entire practice exam in about an hour. That gives me time to read over each of the questions 
questions, read over each of the answers and determine which one, based on the knowledge that I have, is the best answer to each question. Then I get to go back and just kind of review all the questions if I need to, if there's a certain answer that I'm not really sure of or that I want to choose another answer for, I could have that time to kind of go back and see what exactly I want to do to change my answer or improve the answer. And after I have submitted the exam, they automatically give you back what exactly your percentage is. You need to get a 75 or higher to pass the exam. And normally in the practice exam, they give you a list of questions and the answers, whether or not you got them right or wrong. So you can just kind of go over and review them a little bit later in your notes when you're ready. So again, this is another concept that I'm telling you guys to do. Make sure that because you have the practice exam there with all of the questions and your answers that you chose, make sure that you write down the answers that you got wrong and uh, note them to research them at a later time. And for anybody that is still kind of nervous about taking any type of certification exams that are, what are those, those multiple choice, that are still a little bit nervous about taking college exams about any type of topic, I totally get you. I am so sorry for all of this anxiety that you have. It is going to be okay. Might I recommend making sure that you first make sure that you do your studying in increments. I always recommend that you do the Pomodoro technique. It is so important for you guys to give yourself a brain break. And whenever you feel like you are still not understanding a specific concept, make sure that you note it down somewhere, write it down in a different colored ink, make sure that you Google it, make sure that in some ways you're asking yourself this question, what do I understand about this concept? Because being able to start elaborating and processing this in your own words, in your own brain, and being able to then kind of turn it out in an example or in some type of summary in your own words, that helps you solidify whatever concept or process that you're still trying to figure out and work through. I'm also going to say this because I think that it's incredibly important and some of you might not believe me just because of how slow it takes to actually do this, but I will always believe that writing down your notes on a nice sheet of paper or a notepad or a notebook or a journal will always be better than typing out your notes. I know that it can be a tedious task to actually find your concepts or find a specific section if you're only working with a pen and paper, but something about writing down the concepts for me just solidifies everything. I don't particularly like writing down any of my notes in a document like app or anything like that, but if that is something that works for you, make sure that you do what works for you. If you guys are still waiting on for me to take the exam, stay tuned. I will let you guys know how that works out. I am so happy to give you guys all of this information. And if you liked this video, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I will see you later. The funny thing is about um, what I've been looking at so far for this is that I have been doing really well on the practice tests for the introduction of Scrum and Safe, and then the finishing the PI was like the lowest, but this time, like during the actual exam, it was the opposite. So there's a lot kind of going on here in my mind. So I am going to make sure that I do a little bit more to retake this and go from there. Can't really do anything about it, guys, but I am just going to kind of regroup and take the L lesson learned. I am really grateful that I was able to take the exam and figure out what exactly else I need to figure out and go from there. So yeah.